Yo, welcome to another episode of the BJJ Goons Podcast. I'm your host, Tim, the Mushmaster Spriggs. And with me as always, every week is... Yo, what's up everybody? It's no new Nico, no more COVID. Finally back out and in the studio. Although like, we hit a blizzard and uh, today when I'm coming up here, it's like pouring down rain. So still crappy conditions to be out, but I am finally out of lockdown, y'all. Yeah, congratulations. You beat the bug. Mm-hmm. That's really happy to see. Yeah, yeah. I really didn't have like a, a lot of symptoms. Like I think I had like the flu and COVID, you know, because I came back from Brazil kind of getting sick um, because I was in Rio where it was really hot. And then I went to Sao Paulo where it was a lot colder. So I think that kind of messed me up. And I'm always messed up in the winter. So and then I got I got the vid, the Rona. So you had flu, vid, flu and the COVID. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But all in all, you feel better. Yeah, yeah, I definitely wasn't feeling that bad. Like, I have a uh, stationary bike at my house that's part of my physical therapy. So, mm-hmm. like, I was, like, working out and staying active. I was still able to work remotely, which was dope. So, I just really couldn't see anybody. I had to use Instacart to get food delivered. So, shout out to Instacart. Y'all saved my ass. Um, and also my friends um, from High Style that dropped me off some supplies. Well, shit. That's cool that you got your little tribe everybody looking out for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you yeah. survived. Definitely, definitely. Without them, like, it would have really sucked. Do you feel comfortable now that you have the antibodies to just be out here in the streets with no mask on? Um, Not necessarily with no mask on, but to be out here, I'm going to be out there, you know, like. I feel like you should take this opportunity to go do some more traveling for uh, cheap. I'm supposed to go to the Dominican Republic, actually, at the end of the month with my uh, stepmom. A stepmom. I have several now, I guess we could say. What do you mean you have several stepmoms? Like, she's a past. She's no longer married to my father, but, you know, she's, she's cool. still in the lineup. She's Not for cool. him, for me, you know. I have a question, since you're also a child of divorce. You come from a broken home. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. But no, really. Somebody uh, in my family described it as shattered. I was like, "Damn, did we have to shattered. go that far?" I was like, "Damn, yeah, yeah, you know." Broken could just be a crack. I know. One shattered. shattered is I was just like, "Damn, annihilated. We're stabbing people with this shit." But yeah. yeah. Uh huh. What's the question? Though? Do you have a ranking system of who your favorite stepmoms are? Like, do you have like a thing or like a list of like, oh, I liked her. Like, you have a ranking of like your dad's favorite girlfriends. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, she's he's on his. There's only three for me, so, like, I guess yeah, I'm definitely going to go with my mom over it, and then the one that had, like, ten years, you know, like, you know, I have a lot of respect to her, because, like, I'm kind of bitchy, and I was definitely difficult um, growing up with, and, you know, it's hard to be a step-parent, so shout-out to all the step-parents. It's not something I would want to do, so she was always there for me, so that's why, like, we still, um, we're still in touch and stuff like that. You know, because uh, um, there was a period where I didn't talk to my mom. So, like, she was there and my mother wasn't. That's a beautiful story, Nico. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful story. It makes me feel happy. You survived COVID. You have a good motherly relationship with your stepmom. It makes me so happy. You know, it's like love is in the air or something. Right, right, you know. Or COVID. (laughs) And, Tim, you look really snazzy. Like, you're all dressed up for those, uh, for... Um, those of you that are just listening, Tim ain't wa- he ain't rocking no works today. He got that white. He looking fresh. He got the sweater. All right, I see you. I see you, Tim. I was dressed strictly for the podcast. I'm not wearing this for any other particular reason. Mm-hmm. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We'll stick to it because this is not the Patreon. So you know we can just slide on to the next topic. You know. Yes. So let's just kick it off. We had a very interesting story. Or at least a soundbite from one Kainan Duarte, one of the best grapplers in the world, I would argue. I definitely put that up there. He is a he was at one point the number one ranked guy. He's definitely in the doing world. the damn thing. He's definitely doing the damn thing. He has quite the grappling resume. If he were to retire today, he'd be one of the greats. In my opinion, when we're talking about greatness, longevity does have its place, but I think your peak is what's most important, and your peak is what people are going to remember. And Kynan's peak is incredible. And I don't even think we've seen the best of Kynan. But in this article, Kynan talked about grappler pay. He said, I want to get paid better. This is from Bloody Elbow. I want to be paid better. Kynan Duarte not sure if he'll compete at IBJJF Worlds in 2022. Ooh, somebody's popular. My bad. 
it's all good. When looking at the brackets for the 2021 IBJJF Worlds, there were many new black belts expected to win their first titles, but there were also some veterans expected to add another title to their collections. One such veteran was Kainan Duarte of Autos. Since receiving his black belt in 2018, Kainan has gone on to become a dominant force in he the heavyweight division. He's won PANS, PANS No Gi, ADCC, Abu Dhabi Pro, Spider Invitational, and many others. Yo, I'm looking at the list of his achievements on BJJ Hero, and it's just like first, 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 first. It's definitely a stacked list of accomplishments, you know, and that's just that black belt. Yeah, and despite winning a world title on the Gi, kind of focused much more energy on no Gi. He competed at Subversive, rode ADCC, who's number one. He showed a lot of promise. But part of Kainan's interest in the Nogi game is related to compensation, or lack thereof, that he's received competing in the Gi. The IBJJF currently offers cash prizes to its world champions and to winners of its Grand Prix events. But, let's break down the money here. 2021 world champions receive payouts based on the size of their respective brackets, with the maximum potential payout of $7,000 for a division with 33-plus competitors. The absolute division winner currently receives $10,000, so the maximum total payout for a winner of the division in the Open at Black Belt is $17,000. $17,000. And that's the Open, so it's like you're not even giving like people a lot of money in there. Is there any money at the weight class? Or just open? You get $7,000 if you win your weight class. Mm -hmm. If it's 33 people or more, there's a sliding scale of how much compensation you get. So Th women ain't getting paid shit because, like... Because there's not enough of them, mm -hmm. which is totally unfair. It's a roundabout way to be cheap and sexist. But let me continue. In an interview with Vitor Freitas via VF Communica, Kainan Duarte discussed the issue. He said, and I quote, I still don't know if I'll fight the next Worlds in 2022. I don't know if it's going to be something I'm aiming for, you know. I want to be paid better, have more support. Surely the reward could be better. What they, IBJJF, are paying is nothing, you know. I did seven fights in their event. I fought because I wanted to. I'm fighting because I want to. When I don't want to fight anymore, I won't fight. They helped me in some way for sure. Where I was and where I am today is because of the IBJJF. I can't not be grateful. But a fight I do in another event, I win three times or four times more than I win at Worlds. I won $5,000 at Worlds. In a fight with Marigali, I would take a lot more money, you know? A big fight. That $5,000 amount doesn't even pay for my preparation. And we talked about this a good amount. Fighter compensation. We talked about this. definitely said this before. I definitely said this before, but I don't think I knew the specific numbers. Or I didn't articulate them as well as Kynan did. We talk about this all the time. We talk about fighter compensation. We talk about the difficulties of preparation for these tournaments. But I want to turn this over to you. Nico, what are your thoughts on what Kynan had to say? And what are your thoughts on fighter compensation? I mean, obviously we all know that in jiu-jitsu, you're not going to make any money. And there, the one of my partners in Brazil um, that sells products... Um, she's a vendor at the competition. She said something. She said, um, you're not going to make money with jujitsu. You're going to make money from jujitsu. And I was like, wow, you know, that's a, that's an amazing way to put it. Like, you're not going to make money being a world champion. Like, you need to have, like, some kind of business hustle or this or that. So, like, Kynan realized this. And, like, Kynan's young, so it's good that he realized this now. It's like a lot of us came up, like wanting to compete in the pyramid and be world champions but like if we're really dedicating everything that we have like all year round for that tournament and there's no compensation other than you have a title like once you have like the accolades that he has yeah it's time to move on and and, and focus on getting a check and you know owning a house and stuff like that and like being a world champion is not going to create any wealth for your family and it's not going to get you fed so i think he he's making the right move and more athletes need to come up through the color belts kind of aware of that so like they can make smart financial moves we have to look at ourselves as grapplers as businessmen and 
independent contractors, we are not forced to do IBJJF Worlds. It's great. It's a, it's very prestigious, but you can't eat prestige. You cannot. You can't pay your bills with prestige. You can use IBJJF as a stepping stone, as a way to market yourself, but to think that it's the be-all, the end-all of, of, as an athlete, I think it's time for us to reject that because there's there's so much more important things than prestige it's about money it's about what competition you see money talks it may not seem like that now but you're going to see in the next few years that the best guys are going to gravitate to where they're going to be compensated there's no reason why if you're training full time you're preparing like a professional athlete for you to train for a tournament that's going to pay you a fraction of what you could get in a super fight. If you went through a bracket at Black Belt of 33 plus people, you had to be undefeated in your division, beat everybody, and you get $7,000, that's nothing. You're in the red. You might even be in the red for your trip. I don't know how visas work necessarily. Oh, I don't hell know yeah, definitely. How traveling Especially works. Especially if you're getting them like denied. Yeah. So just the preparation alone and for you to try to get there if you're not American or you're not in a position where you're getting your your ride paid for, you're going to be in the red just to win your division. And it's so hard. It's almost disrespectful to pay the Black Belt World Champion $7,000 when you're a multi-million dollar corporation or sorry, what are, what is IBJF, IBJGF considered? Like a, a S corp or a they charitable. They used to be a nonprofit, actually. Uh, yeah, it used to that be. That was right? like a whole thing. I, like now they're probably just some kind of corporation, but definitely not an S corp. But yeah. And if you don't win, you get nothing. There were some more numbers. I think they were talking about like how much money they get off of worlds and like the amount of millions they have millions coming in, and like they pay out the least. And it's wild. I was like thinking about like Europeans, like one of the athletes from Today Kids Project, um, Lara Bandera, and like she's really amazing. Um, she just got her purple belt. She wants to go to Europeans, and I was like, all right, like, because all the times I've complained about them hitting me up for shit that they're not supposed to hit me up about, and this and that, and every tiny little competition, like when one of them is actually good enough like it's, it's everybody wants to go to europeans but to like get funded by the project to go you need to be like actually yeah like you're, you're an athlete not just like oh we're sending kids we don't send the kids <laughs> to europe so it's like yeah. she's good enough to go to europeans the plane ticket alone is a thousand dollars and she told me like last month so it's like to get like you're gonna need a thousand dollar round trip like then you got to pay for the hotel uh you got to pay for food um that's gonna be like two three thousand dollars and i was like in that amount of time raising that much money it's gonna be freaking hard um almost like and if we can get it it's just like Mm. so now it's like this year we kind of got to sit down and like talk to people like her and be like like you really need to like focus less on ibjjf um that they have in rio and really focus on like ajp tour because they're all over brazil and once you start winning them and like traveling to go compete in ajp tour so that you can get that plane to get out to abu dhabi i'll also speak for myself looking at the numbers and the career trajectory of elite grapplers I might not do worlds next year or for a very long time because it's the preparation involved in the gi. Tim, you're retired. You, you're you're right there with Duarte. Yes, like yeah, yeah, like what's the point? If you're, what is the point? You win it once or you medal or whatever. What is the point? If you're a competitor, the bag is not there. That's the top one. You if you don't win, you get nothing, and it's ten thousand dollars if you win the black belt open. Do you know how hard it is to prepare for worlds? You know how hard it is. It is. I am. It's super hard. Some of these guys, like, that doesn't even cover their steroid bill. I'm serious. <laughs> when you think about the preparation, I was like, at first I was like, five Gs for preparation. But, like, it, like Master Lloyd always says, like, worlds isn't, like, a four-week camp. Like, you train and you prepare for worlds year all year round. round. Like, with nutrition, physical therapy, massages, like, um, 
bringing it to like Sadiq and MMA going to the extremes. Like when Sadiq has fight camps, he flies people in that are the style of his opponent so that he can train with. So like to break it down to like a to take it to an extreme, like yeah, you do really have to invest in a fight camp. I think it's like having that rich dad mentality as opposed to that poor dad mentality. Like you really need to go all in. Yeah, you want to go in with your preparation or else you'll have a lifetime of regrets if you don't make it. But I think Kain is telling the truth. I think that's the elephant in the room that IBJJF is going to eventually have to account for or else they're going to start losing their best guys and they're going to be considered a joke long term. But who knows? They bounce back with the rules. I mean, they came up with the allowing heel hooks rules. So we'll see. But they're really slow to adapt and being slow to adapt is never good especially with new things like who's number one is coming out they have another event coming out uh coming up in end of january february end of january so it's like first it was just fight to win that had like the the super fight lineup or even like small brackets there wasn't a lot of people running smaller brackets um or smaller promotions and now even like with people like randori coming out with local ones like IBJJF has definitely got a, it's definitely not what it was before. And there's no going back. There's no going back because now there's competition, which is great for the competitors, which is great for the fans. Speaking of competition, though, and getting a bag, Carla Esparza, this is a couple weeks ago, but, you know, we had the holiday season. Nico, you were fighting off the plague. We were all over the place. But this is very poignant for what we're talking about this week. Carla Esparza gets cut open in a grappling match, and Craig Jones loses to a UFC fighter. Were you able to check out the highlights or I was, check out I a little was. bit of. I didn't see any of Craig's fight. I did see um, Carla. Um, I read it about Craig and his fight and what was going on with that. But, you know, typical, that bacha estaca or that pile drive, it's like, it's not MMA. Like, for Carla, that's used to, like, you can bleed all over and keep fighting and get your title. It's like, uh, jiu-jitsu is a little bit different. So that really sucks. It really sucks for a lot of levels. It sucks for one because you never want to see someone get busted open like that on the mat because you immediately think at least i immediately think about the hospital bills and the recovery and she has a title fight coming up i think it's against rose namayunas she's in line for a title shot soon she she would really she had a fight she probably wouldn't have been allowed to be grappling that's gotta fuck with her money but she, it's still not until later on because rose just oh, fought okay. it's not until the spring early spring but still you're right nico they shouldn't allow this to happen uh, and it sucks that she got busted open. Um, you know, I, I do love that technique because in real life, like, you will get slammed if the person knows what they're doing. Uh, it's always risky to slam people. Even when Rampage slammed Ricardo Arona, with the, when he got out of that triangle, he got busted open a little bit just because of the nature of the technique. But I think the bigger point I'm, I'm seeing with the whole Carla Spires uh, getting busted open is why do these MMA fighters take these matches? Do you think it's because of the money? And if so, is it because they need the money? Or they just love the the, the, the hustle and the grind? I mean, I don't think crossing back over to jiu-jitsu after we just discussed it not having money, um, I don't think that was what it was. Like, to me, I thought... It was exciting to see, like, Carla, somebody that does MMA, who has, like, a, a background in wrestling, how MMA is supposed to be mixed martial arts, kind of come back to jujitsu and try to do a little something-something. Like, so it would have been nice to see her, like, work out more and see what her grappling style was like, somebody that's primar primarily from MMA. Like, you see a lot of BJJ guys crossing over, but you don't see a lot of it the other way around. Yeah, you don't really see that a lot of the other way around. It's possibly because MMA people, when they start, they want to be MMA fighters a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and they don't specialize. You know, typically, when you see a crossover, it's a guy that used to be a grappler. A prime example is Gilbert Burns, where he was one of the best grapplers in the world, pound for pound, and then he went away. But now he's back, and he, he does grappling matches. And I still, to this day, believe that he could medal at ADCC if he so chose. But it was very refreshing to see her. It's just weird to me because I know about fighter pay in MMA, and it's not very good. 
And I know that in a lot of instances for jujitsu or grappling tournaments, they'll pay out. They got money. Like, just like MBJGF, these promotions have the money. We just have to fight them for it. We have to say, yo, we're, we, 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 there's a minimum. And I see all the time there's people trying to come together with some pseudo union for grapplers. And I think that's necessary, but it's hard to get a whole bunch of people together because I don't think Donald Cerrone would have taken. What's so funny? Uh, just talking about unions and this and that, like I, it's, they got all unions for everything. Just the idea of a, a jujitsu union, like because um, we were talking about before we started filming, trying to do a town hall and get some dating advice from people in jujitsu, and you were like, you think they got good opinions? So it's like you know them same group of people in no gi, matching no gi attire, trying to like form a union is like the idea I had, like tenth planet. Yeah, it's going to be hard to come together. But the whole point I'm trying to make is these corporations, these promotions, they have the dough. We just have to fight for it. But sometimes I always wonder, like, man, are these people hard on money? Like, why would you come back and just do a grappling match when you can risk injury? I don't think it's a good idea if I'm in the line for a title shot to take a grappling match, even if the rules are a little bit different. Because, yes, you can end up like Carlos Esposa with a serious cut. And we don't know how that cut's going to heal. You hear a lot of times when somebody gets busted open, they have scar tissue there. And then it's just so much easier for them to cut open again, like uh, like Nate Diaz mm-hmm, or Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz lost a, f- lost a fight against a guy he was way better than. Not because I forgot when this, uh, how long ago it was. It was a long time ago, but they stopped the fight because he got busted open too many times. I think it was against KJ Nunes. Like, KJ Nunes was touching him, but he wasn't doing nothing. It was just like he was bleeding. And they're like, oh, we have to stop the fight. You're bleeding too much. Yeah. The doctor calls it like. It's over. Yeah. So I don't think they should do it. But another interesting development that happened was Craig Jones lost his grappling match against UFC fighter. What was his name? Oh, uh, Bradley something Bradley. Bradley something Bradley. That's a very interesting name. I got off of it. I went to Grapple Fest. Damn. No, I didn't. Sean Bradley, I think it was. Yeah, Sean, Sean Brady. 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 He lost to Sean Brady. And now I'm gonna give I'm gonna pitch Craig a little bit of bail here. He lost a match where the rules were he couldn't go for heel hooks. Just heel hooks, right? He wasn't allowed to or leg locks. I don't know what the rules were. I just know that he wasn't allowed he definitely wasn't allowed to go for heel hooks. I'm not sure if he wasn't allowed to go for leg locks altogether. But Nico, you got to admit, if you're a specialist, you can't come up with the excuse that you weren't allowed to use leg locks on this guy. I mean, I I get that it's taking away half of your arsenal, but if you're an elite world-class grappler, you can't be getting beat by an MMA fighter. Just because you can't use leg locks. Just because like, you can't use leg locks. Like, you make us look bad as a sport. Like, that's what everybody tries to say. It's like, you got to be well-rounded. You can't just say, all I got is leg locks and just be a niche and then come out and call out everybody, you know? So, that's definitely excuses. Like, nobody wants to hear excuses. That is super freaking lame because he does talk a lot of shit. Like, he'll call out everybody, but, man... You can't call out guys and then lose like that and think that people are just going to accept you as some kind of world-class martial artist in the grappling realm. And you, like, you just shut the hell up. I, and, and I get it. The guy held him down and he wouldn't let him get any offense. But, dude, all you do all day is no gi jujitsu. You train with guys that do that shit to you. So you're telling me you wouldn't try to get off your back or throw up more attacks? I saw a little bit of the highlights, and I'm looking like, man, people are going to pay money to teach you how to defend themselves, and you just got held down for an MMA guy? You didn't even try to come up? Like, you didn't even try to go takedown for takedown? At least try to scramble? 
Yeah, show that you can switch up, that you have some variation to your game and like not just smack talking leg locks and guard pulling because if something isn't working, then you need to be able to switch it up mid-match. You can't just stay with one solid game plan. I think that's a it's a testament to how jiu-jitsu has somewhat lost its way. Jiu-jitsu became less of a martial art to accompany combat in a real-life situation where yeah, I'm on my back, but I'm going to kill you, to now it's like the super meta, like I specialize in this one tiny fragment of jujitsu and the certain rule sets that help me. But when I have to expand, I'm just a, a fish out of water. If this was a real fight, even without the striking part, like on the feet, if I'm holding you down the whole time and you're spamming leg locks, so you can't do shit. Like I'm punching you in the face or whatever. And MMA people already think they're better than jujitsu people a lot of the time. Would you say, Nico? Or they just have this thing where it's like, like Top Gun, where it's like, I'm a fighter pilot. Like, we're the coolest. Like, all you other guys suck. But like, MMA never respects jujitsu because they can't just punch somebody. They're like, oh, well, if this was real life, I would just punch them. Like, that's their number one argument. Well, they won that argument. MMA beat jiu-jitsu that day. They did. They, they did. did. It happens, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, like, I was listening to Flo Grappling talk about it a little bit, and, no, they were talking about he has a, another fight schedule with Pedro Mourinho coming up at the end of January or February for who's number one, um, and they were worried about his cardio. <laughs> like, who's cardio? Uh, Craig's. I'd be concerned, too. I watched his film. Yeah, and it's He gets like, tired. Yeah, exactly. And, like, it's nothing about what I see on, like, social media and not that we should base, like, the sport on social media. Like, and this is why I don't think, like, he's a discredit to the sport or, like, focusing on, like, actually being talented and well routing because, like, as we see, when you take away his one trick, he did lose. He wasn't able to adapt. And, you know, people like that, like, they're effective in dogi, submission only when you can heel hook, you know. Like, but if you want to look at other people that actually compete in, like, a wide spectrum of rules or like gi and no gi like i consider like craig to just be like a funny dude on social media like his last post was like something about power bottom techniques that gabby garcia was so excited about and like still always playing off that only fans thing so to me he's like kind of like a personality like when i go and i'm like all right i need to go study some kind of like well, I guess I would, like, he does have that heel hook thing, but he's not like, oh, I'm going to go study jujitsu. I'm going to go study Craig Jones. He's not going to be the first person I go to, you know? Mm-mm. I'd go with Lachlan first. <laughs> you know? Exactly, because, you know, Lachlan shuts the fuck up, and he's drilling somewhere. Where the fuck is Lachlan? Ever since he tapped all those big motherfuckers out, like, you don't see him running around on social media. He's doing seminars, collecting his bag, and doing his business. How far can you get for, by being a clown? That's what I want to know. And he's just testing it out. Before we move on, uh, I just want to give a special shout out to a couple of our sponsors. I want to give a shout out to Blue Edge Business Solutions. Blue Edge Business are the people that did my website, timspriggsbjj.com. Before I was using all kinds of stupid stuff, I was blogging and I didn't really have any guidance when it came to my social, to my website and anything with my social media needs and the connectivity that I had. But... I went to Blue Edge Business. They made my website. If you go to timspriggsbjj.com, it not only looks great, but it has actual utility. You know, you can go on timspriggsbjj.com and book a seminar, a private lesson, a match critique, or I can make your game plan for you. If you are a small business owner like myself, they can hook it up so that people can make appointments with you. You can do billing on the website. And all of that, I would never have been able to do on my own and figure it out. I'm a caveman when it comes to the computer. But if you go to BlueEdgeBusiness.com, hit them up, tell them I sent you for a very special discount, you will get the hookup. They will solve all your digital marketing needs and your web design needs. So go to Blue Edge Business. And as you guys can see on YouTube, when you look at me, you notice that I'm pretty jacked now. I'm filling out this sweater. It's a nice sweater, but I'm filling it out. And part of it is not just because I lift weights and do jujitsu all the time, but because I eat well. And that's because I use John's Fit Meals. Go to johnsfitmeals.com. Use promo code BJJGoons for a very special discount. And you can get your meals, your meals for the entire week made for you. Use go to johnsfitmeals.com. They have a weekly menu. 
breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks that are very healthy. They're built for the top athletes in the world, such as myself. You can pick them out. They are homemade, handcrafted by actual chefs, not people in some kind of, I don't know, a sweatshop somewhere. It's not microwaved or put in plastic. It's actually food, handmade by chefs for you give you all the nice natural ingredients organic just go there get the food work out and you can look like a beast like yours truly so nico what's up what else is going on uh nothing we were talking about how craig has an upcoming fight but we also wanted to talk about some of the other upcoming events for example um adcc everybody knows it's going to be september 17th um you know what's been interesting? Because not only did like um, Mo post the no, it's not Mo. Who's Seth? Always posts Seth. the betting lines for stuff, and it's like so. It'll be interesting because I think betting has definitely become popular, and betting on ADCC in September would be interesting. It's always interesting when you're betting on grappling, especially since it's in Vegas this year as well. Mm-hmm. It's always interesting in a tournament format because there's so many variables. It's not just the one-off. You got to bet on a guy that you think that has the ability to run through no matter who gets put in front of him. ADCC always has upsets. There's always people that come out of the woodwork. And then, you know, let's keep it 100. People get really good odds placed on them and they shit the bed. You don't know. You don't know about injuries because it's not just one match. You could do great day one and look like a star. But sometime during those two matches, the first day, you get a little tweak, you get an injury, or something happens. Your body cools down. You cool down. You and something wrong. Yes, or you got to match up with some random guy that comes out of nowhere, and you lose, and then you lost your money. Like, look at who's number one. If you had put money on me, you'd be rich as shit right now, because I was plus 4,000 to win the whole thing. But no one probably thought... What would happen? And we need the dr- to start a betting group. A betting group. We do need to start a betting group. And also, the brackets. We don't know the brackets. We don't know what the brackets are, how they break down. Sometimes one side is real hard and the other one isn't. And some guy that probably won and won on the other side of the bracket gets on the good side of the bracket, the easier side, and they get a nice run to the finals. And the other group is the group of death where they just take each other out and whoever wins that side is all fucked up and then you got a final. Yes, and you got a final where it's like, okay, I got a 30-minute match and I fought three of the toughest dudes ever on my side over the last 36 hours and I got a fresh dude that just molly everyone on his side of the bracket. What am I going to do? And if you put money on the guy that went through the group of death, you're fucked. So, I'm very interested in betting lines. I want to see what they look like. I have not officially been invited. I don't know what's going on. If I don't get invited, it's fine. It's okay. I can move on with my life. But it would be nice if I got invited. It would be nice. Yeah, but that was some great info. So, if you are planning on betting on ADCC and the knowledge that Tim just dropped about how uh, these top-level athletes work through the brackets helps you place your bets and win money Don't forget to tip. You know how you can tip us? By going to patreon.com slash bjjgoons. Go to patreon.com slash bjjgoons. We have bonus episodes. We have town halls. We have techniques that we show. We have a whole bunch of stuff, man. We have a private community. We have a secret discord. Well, it's not a secret anymore because I said it. But we have a secret discord channel that we have. And it's really fun. I get on there every day, and and it's pretty dope. And all the people that are on the Discord and Patreon are with the shits, and it's super fun. Just check us out at patreon.com slash bjjgoons. We have three different tiers. Little homie, big homie, certified goon. Pick any one you want. All of them have very special, I guess you would say, perks. Perks for each level. So check us out. BJJ Goons, patreon.com slash BJJ Goons. Yeah, make sure you tip us, man. Make sure you tip your people, man. Like, tip. You got to tip, you know, people provide a service. You got to tip them, right, Nico? That is very true. Very true. 
You drop your individual cash apps at the end. But, you know, anyway, wrapping up, because we were talking about betting odds. There are a few, <laughs> before we close up, there are a few more events I just want to see uh, throw out there. Uh, leave in the comments if anybody is planning on going. The rest are IBJJF. They have Europeans, which is happening February 14th through the 20th. So this is not only Valentine's Day. This is pretty much marking the two-year anniversary of COVID in the epicenter, because, y'all, this shit started in Italy. So they were like fuck it we're gonna go right back and have a super spreader event so that's gonna be in italy which would be dope except i love portugal but like ever since they announced that europeans was coming to italy like the algorithm on instagram has been giving me all this travel italy stuff beautiful place um so let us know if anybody that listens to the podcast is going to be going out there to compete they also have pans in the wild wild west that is florida and let me tell you some of y'all listeners defend florida to the death because anytime i go out on my instagram story talking shit about the crazy people in florida one of y'all is like but okay whatever i got you i ain't gonna talk shit well i'm gonna give my opinion um and on top of europeans and pans ibjjf has pretty much opened up for their normal round of opens they're going all over the place like new orleans where i would love to go um that's february and different cities so people can start racking up points and all of these covid variants so that'll definitely be interesting i'm trying to find the dates to brazilian nationals to see if that's actually going to happen um and try Try to head back to Brazil for that. Maybe drag Timmy along with me. Where are you going to drag me? Uh, Brazil. I would love to go to Brazil. Mm -hmm. It would be nice. Yeah, good idea. I only have good ideas. Like, I don't know what y'all be thinking. You do have very good ideas, mm -hmm. Nico. You really do. Yeah. Now I got a purple about to back him up. What, y'all? What? So before we wrap, do we have any other? Do you have any other bright ideas before we leave? Um, no, just to uh, follow me on Instagram at no new Nico and a slide over to favelajujitsu dot com because we have finally dropped some new merch, including like this sweater that I am wearing. We actually have Ankara sweaters in larger numbers before. Anytime I sold them before, it was kind of like personal, um, under the table type stuff. So make sure to go to favelajujitsu dot com. And you can find me at timspraysbjj.com. Like I said before, you go there for a private lesson, match critique. I can make your game plan for you. All that good stuff is at timspraysbjj.com. And if you want to see what's going on in my life, well, you have to be my friend or something. Like You have to be in the inner circle. But if you want to see how I pretend to live my life, you can go to my social media at timspraysbjj at Instagram or Facebook. I'm not really on there as much because I'm trying to focus on the Patreon and our private community there. But, hey, I post here and there on Instagram. Follow me and let Instagram know that they are completely being disrespectful to me because they have not given me a blue check. But, hey, I have a blue check in real life. So it's okay. Not really, but I'm sorry. Yay. I'm not going to take it personal. But, hey, I do want that blue check. Guys, this has been the BJJ Goons Podcast. Thanks for listening to us this week. Have a safe and happy week. Stay black. Peace.